hearts and minds would be open, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon us, that we might not just see it intellectually, but we might see it by the power of the Holy Spirit, that it will become so alive to us that it will charge our inner man, and we'll be able to see by the Spirit of the Lord. These last days are upon us, Lord, and we need to know what's going on because we are the church and we want to be able to share Christ with as many people as possible. Many people want to know what is the future. Well, we know it to some degree. And we thank it that the little bit we know that it's good. And we know, Lord, the end is better than even the beginning. And we thank you now as the Holy Spirit arrests us that our minds will not go yonder way and wonder, but stay on the lesson. And we want to thank you for that ability in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 All right, let's, um, let's sort of go over the past, what we've been studying. We've uh, studied uh, some in Daniel. And we said that this uh, statue here, in uh, Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar got a vision of that. He got a dream. He dreamt about this thing, and Daniel interpreted for him and for us. How many remembers what the goal, what kingdom was the goal? Uh, Babylon. Right. Everybody say Babylon. Babylon. All right. The goal represents Babylon. All right, here we have the other part of his body here. Silver. What kingdom is that? <laughs> Persia. Huh? Persia. Persia. Very good. See, so when you sit up here, you, can, you get more. All right. Now, here's what you want to see. That when Daniel saw the vision, none of this... From the head, there, it happened, in other words, he was in Babylon right here at this point of time. And none of this, of this statue had come forth yet. I want you to see that, okay? Now, if I asked you where are we in the time element on this chart, what would you say? Well, let me help you out. 69 weeks right here, from here to here, 445 over here, actually 606, all the way to here, actually from here, that is to here, is 69 weeks. Each week is seven years. So you've got 483 uh, years. That's the, that's the cross. So in Daniel 9, 27, it, it gives us that plan all right, what are we going to do now? We're going to re rewind the tape. Are you ready? We're all going to get up. We're going to get on the tape. We're going to rewind the tape. And we're all standing right here. This is where we're standing, right here at the head. We don't know what the future is. But Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar gets the vision, the dream. And uh, Daniel interprets it. And we're all saying, well, what does the dream mean, Daniel? What is the future of Israel? This is really the whole future of Israel right on down to the end of the tribulation years. And God gives Daniel the vision. He said, Daniel, church of faith, here we are right here. And we're in this kingdom. Now God used this kingdom to go into Israel, Nebuchadnezzar and his troops. And the prophet told Israel, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to have to correct you. And of course, they all obeyed, right? No, they didn't obey. They kept on with their evil ways. And so God allowed Nebuchadnezzar and his army to come in and capture the Jews, which were in Judah. Remember, Israel was broken up in two parts after uh, Solomon passed away. You remember that? How many remembers their history on all that? Okay, so 10 tribes, Israel, two tribes, Judah. Okay, now 
200 years before Judah was taken into captivity into Babylon, 200 years before that happened, Syria came in and took the 10 tribes and put them in and took them out to captivity, okay? Now, we have roughly about four kingdoms here, but there's two more kingdoms that, that, that was prior to this time. Who can tell me the two kingdoms prior to the golden head? All right. Egypt is one. All right. Egypt is one. You remember Egypt? I remember Egypt. Okay. And who was the next one? Syria. Syria. Right. Okay. But it don't. <clears throat> but they're not in here because that's past tense. Okay. So here we are, right here, standing by Daniel. How you doing, Daniel? Standing right here with Daniel. <laughs> And Daniel, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into all that you already know. I'm sure that you know what happened, that, that the king was going to wipe all of his wise men off the board. <laughs> Even Daniel and his, his uh, buddies were going to, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so, but God gave Daniel the vision and, and told Nebuchadnezzar about these kingdoms that would come. Now, here we are. We don't know the future. Like now, we don't know the future. Well, we do some of it, don't we? Because it's all on the chart over there, on that board, okay? So we have the next kingdom, which is? Persia, right, all right. The Medes and the Persians, okay? Now, here's the beautiful thing about it. God used Persia to defeat Nebuchadnezzar. One of the kings was Cyrus, C-Y-R-U-S, Cyrus. Cyrus was named by Jeremiah 150 years before Cyrus was born. Did you get that? You can read that in Jeremiah. I don't have time to go into every scripture tonight. It'd be great if, if we had that time. But I want you to think about it. 150 years before Cyrus was born, and God told Jeremiah that Cyrus was going to be his servant, even though Cyrus was a heathen king, and Cyrus was going to free the Jews from Babylon. So God uses ungodly people, ungodly nations to carry out his will. Now that's powerful when you think about it. Powerful. And there's a lot. When you study about Cyrus, I, I got a material on him about that big but he was quite a man and uh, he set the Jews free all right now we come on down what was the next next kingdom the Greeks, the Greeks. Alexander the Great you remember Alexander the Great okay a lot of this is in the history books if you studied your history <coughs> now <clears throat> remember we're all right here None of this has come to pass yet. We're right here. We're seeing the future. But now here we are somewhere about right here now, right now. But we're going to rewind the tape all the way back here, and we don't know what the future is going to be. So we have our next one here. <laughs> Push the wrong key. Now, <clears throat> we stretch the toes out a little bit there. See, that's his toes. That's the kingdoms that's coming in, the kingdom that's coming in, the ten kingdoms that's coming in place right now. Each one of these toes represent a kingdom. And if you notice right there, there's a rock. A rock right there at the bottom of the toes right there. You remember? Rock of ages, cliff for me. Who's the rock? Jesus, Jesus is the rock. That's the kingdom that's in the near future, okay? And we're part of that kingdom. We pray the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Now, so we are in, on this chart somewhere about right here, on those toes, okay? Now, you've got to remember, uh, uh, 
day to the Lord is a thousand years. Two thousand years is two days. So God's in eternity. There's no time in eternity. You draw a circle, a round circle, that's what it is. And in this round circle, you've got this little bit of time area in that round circle called time. And when the time is up, we go back into eternity. Eternity, right here, you've got a little bit of area. That's where we are in the time area. And then eternity begins again. Okay? How many understand that? How many don't understand that? All right. I assume that everybody understands that. Maybe you ought to teach this. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, let's get back over here. We're back over here now. We're in Babylon, right? We're in Babylon, and we're looking at the future. So we said Babylon, Persia, Greece, um, Alexander was 33 years old when he died. And he captured all of that area over there, all the way to India, and died at 33 years old. Now, he was busy, wasn't he? I mean, he was a torch. But he was in the Bible, and he was prophesied that he'd come along. Now, this really doesn't really have anything to do with the church, but yet it does. That don't make sense, does it? But really, it was, Daniel didn't know anything about the church. Do we understand that? The church is not in here. It came in there later. See, God gives revelation and revelation and revelation. Just like when you, you first came to the Lord, all you knew, you were saved. Then you found out you was a child of God. Then you found out you had eternity. Then you, you found out you're not your own, you belong to God. You, you, know, you didn't learn everything the first day when you got saved. It took a while for a revelation to come in. And so that's the way it was as far as history is concerned. Now, let's jump over here and realize that as this kingdom right here was Rome. Okay? Now, how many of you got your little chart? Of you? I gave everybody one of these. Now take a look at this, okay? You you got you don't, you need one. <coughs> you, we got some dates on there that'll help you out. Hallelujah! All right, I don't know if I huh? Five of them. You okay? We need five of them. You need five. I need five, too. <laughs> All right, I'm out of them. I'm sorry. I got them. They're around here somewhere. I'll try to get them later on. But anyway, let me say this. When you look at your chart, you see the, the image again. Now, before I go any further on that, I want to say this. You see these animals down here? How many see these animals? The bear and... and uh, Greece, each one of these animals here represents the same thing that this statue represents. Okay? This is, this is in Daniel 2, and these animals here you'll see in Daniel 7. Okay? And so they correspond with this statue. Okay? There you have it. And now you have the Antichrist right here, which really starts down here at the bottom in the toes, see. All right, now, when you study all of that, these are symbolic symbols of kingdoms. So it's very simple, it's really not complicated. Once you get through all of the symbolism, very simple. you got these kingdoms on the earth. History records that you've got Babylon. Babylon was a, occupied. All, now notice, everything is over there in Europe. Everything is over there in the Middle East. Just think of everything is over there. Israel is in the center of the earth. All these nations, it was all around Israel. All around God's people. Israel is surrounded by the Muslims now. It's all about over there. But what happens over there to now affects us. You see that? But not as much as it affects. Where's the, where did Jesus, where was Jesus born? Anybody know? Six miles. 
Six miles up the road from, from Jerusalem, right? <coughs> Bethlehem. Jesus' ministry was over there. Pentecost was over there. The church started over there. Everything had been over there, but then it began to go around the world, see? It began to affect the world. Now, we all know that Christ is going to, when he comes back in the second coming, he's going to land in, in New York. Huh? <laughs> we're, 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 oh, Charleston, who said Charleston? Hanahan! <laughs> Wasn't he all right? No, he's going to land over there. Everything, when you read the Bible, is about over there. Where is America? Right here. We're in America. Does the Bible say anything about America? Not specifically, but you might find it out uh, uh, about the lions, uh, you know, like England and the little, little things that branch off from England, uh, you know, whatever. But it's not clear. Okay, so we're not worrying about it. We know we're here. Everybody, if you know you're here, raise your hand. All right, we're here. America's here. But what, how, everything is over there. Right now, all that's going on in the world, which is prophecy unfolding right before our very eyes, is happening in Hanahan. Where? Over there. Isn't that amazing? See, once you get that understanding, when Jesus comes back, it'll be right on Mount Olive. When he rules and reigns the earth in the millennium years, where's, where's he going to be ruling and reigning? Right over there in Israel. Everything is over there in that area around the Mediterranean Sea. Iraq, Iran is in the Bible. Egypt is in the Bible. Israel is in the Bible. Lebanon is in the Bible. Turkey is in the Bible. Greece is in the Bible. All those countries over there is in the Bible. It's all about that area over there. So remember that, okay? Now, when Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel, in their minds, the whole world was around that area. That was the world. When you read the Bible, it talks about the world. That, that was the world. See, we way down the line, aren't we? We 2,000 years down the line. So you've got to keep all that in mind when you study scriptures. Now, <clears throat> let me give you a little briefing right here. Let's just say, all right, where are we? Let's identify, let's identify something here. <clears throat> all right, the Babylon Empire, you got your little uh, pamphlet there. I wonder what that next one is. Let's see what that is. That's the last one here. Okay. Everybody see that goal on your little chart? Right here, goal, Babylon, that's a kingdom. God used that kingdom to punish Israel, okay? All right, he used the Persian kingdom to punish Babylon. He used Alexander the Great, the Greeks, to punish Persia. And then you go down to Rome and use Rome to punish the Greeks, all right? Now... What you have is, if you notice, the uh, Roman Empire went to 300 B.C. to 476 A.D. So that would be starting with them all the way down to 476 B.C. to something a little over 500 some years ago, just 500 some years back. That's as far as we go. Did you find some more? Good, thank you. Thank you so much. So we see that, that time area. Now, if you notice the, the, the divided kingdom, iron and clay. Now, so the, the, the iron and clay is the toes. That's the fourth kingdom. One, two, three. Actually, they say, yeah, one, two, three, We'll say four. Now, if you notice the toes stretched out, because that's a period of time from, um, we see Down from uh, AD 476. 
Okay. Now the Bible says the kingdoms are all gone. All those kings, kingdoms are gone. They don't have their power no more. But the people are still in those kingdoms. And you'll read that in the scriptures. But down here on this last kingdom, yeah, we're going to talk about the seven years of tribulation. <clears throat> There's only three and a half years of great tribulation. Now in the seven years, we've got to understand is the 70th year of Daniel. Have you ever heard of that? The 70th year of Daniel, which has not happened. Now what happened is, <clears throat> in the church age, the time of the church age, which I'm going to come over here and we'll see that to this board. This is the church age, the time of grace. So where are we at? This is the rapture of the church right here. So here we are right here. Right here, close to the rapture. This is where we're at, almost 2,000 years. We know that um, from Adam to Abraham was 2,000. From Abraham to, to the birth of Christ was 2,000, so that's 4,000. And then from, from the birth of Christ to the, uh, to the second coming of Christ is another <clears throat> 2,000. So that's 6,000. That's the number for man. So that's the time where 6,000 years of man time will be over. And then the second coming <coughs> will be a thousand years of Christ reigning on the earth. Everybody got that picture? Very simple, not complicated. 2,000, there's Abraham. Abraham to the birth of Christ with the cross there all close together. Another 2,000 to the second coming of Christ, and you got 1,000 here of, of Christ reigning on the earth. And see, God promised Abraham that his seed, and by the way, we are the seed of Abraham. How many know that? The book of Galatians tells us that. So we're grafted in. So when you look at this, you can look back now, and you can see, you can study about the cross. Babylon, David, remember Saul, David, and, uh, and, and Solomon was the three kings. And after that, they had some other kings, which were wicked kings. And that's why uh, Babylon had to come in and, and take them into bondage. So you see right here, 606 B.C., right here, and right here at the birth of Christ, you've got 600 years. See that little bit of time thing right there? About 600 years. And these kingdoms are right in here. 600 years. 606 <coughs> to the birth of Christ. So that's six, 600 years of, of Israel's history of this over here. This all right in here. Now we are at <clears throat> the ten toes. See, the ten toes are stretched all the way to uh, the end of the tribulation years until the second coming. So you've got seven years of tribulation. So these from here to here, or about a little bit here to here, is those toes over there. That's the ten nations that's coming up today, and the Antichrist will come forward. Now, right now we are in a shift as far as prophecy is concerned, because what's happening over there in the Middle East, there's Psalms 83. How many's heard of Psalms 83? Let me see your hands. All right, a few of you. Psalms 83, when you read that, you will see that all the nations that surround Psalms 83... I mean, Psalms 83 surrounds um, Israel, all those nations, and they're Arab nations, Muslim nations. Okay? And what happens is Israel deals with those nations. Their army deals with, with those nations. But after that, then we have what you call Ezekiel War. The Ezekiel War, Ezekiel 38. Remember, we studied 37 about Israel coming into being. Remember the bones, 37? Remember the bones were rattling? And then Israel came forth, became a strong nation. And then, of course, since 1948, the Arabs have tried to destroy Israel, but they haven't been able to do it. So they're going to try it one more time. 
And so we got that war coming up, plus the, what you call the Ezekiel War. That's what I wanted to, to touch in tonight, but I'm reviving you a little bit. I hope I am anyway, uh, to get a, uh, for you to get a clear picture here. <coughs> now, the Ezekiel War, God does the fighting for Israel. You got to see that. God does the fighting for Israel and the whole earth will see it, and a lot of good things will be happening because of that. And many people will begin to believe that God is God because of that war. But in the, in the Psalms 83, the Israelites do that fighting, but God, of course, is helping them and directing them. So you can see the difference in those two wars, okay? And the 83, it's Arab nations. But in the... Uh, Ezekiel War 38 and 39, Gog. Have you heard the word Gog and Magog and Tubal and all that? So in the uttermost parts of the north, which if you go from Israel all the way north, you go through Turkey and you go right on to Russia. See, so there's, um, there's um, Russia that way. Egypt is that way south. West is that way and east is that way when you go over there. So when you go over there, you check all of that out and you find the direction when they talk about the king of the south or the king of the north or the king of the west or whatever, you can see from that point, okay? Now, so you get a general idea of where we're at there. Now, let's come back over here. I, said, no, I, was, I wanted to get into Ezekiel 38 but I'm just refreshing your mind. Now, most of us know this. Now, remember, when you read the Bible, this is the timeline that they saw. It's very important that you see that. What did uh, John the Baptist say? John the Baptist, he said what? Repent, for the kingdom of God is afar off. No, but the kingdom of God is near. Jesus preached the same thing. This was the timeline at that point. Now, remember I said that when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they came to the promised land it, right there at the River Jordan, they sent a couple of spies over. And the ten spies came back and only two people believed that they could take the land. And the others, we can't take it. And because of that unbelief, they had, that generation had to wander in the desert for 40 years. Okay? But it was God's design for them to take it right then. So it's important that the people of God are obedient. Okay? And when God's people are obedient, His plan moves along much faster. Okay, so his plan had to be on hold. The, the Israelites wondered and, and they died out, didn't they? And then the next generation that came along after 40 years later, then they came up to the river and they crossed the river, remember, and began to take the land. Okay, now it was God's plan in the beginning that Israel be the nation to spread the gospel around the world. Well, they did, a few of them did on that time, Paul, on the apostles, and many of the people in the first century church. I've heard people say, well, it'd be nice if we were like the first century church. No. In some areas, I would say yes. <laughs> I've read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you'd say, I understand what you're talking about. Because a lot of them was, uh, they just wouldn't obey God, just like the Jews, you see. But praise God for those that did obey the word of God. So we see God, he can stretch time or he can shrink time. How many of you know in the book of Revelation that the, the, the <clears throat> destruction will be so great, God has to shorten the time. If he didn't, no flesh would be saved. How many remember that in the Bible? talking about revelation in that area because wars and killing and murder and earthquakes and all kind of things that are going to happen during that period of time. So he has to shorten those days to save the flesh, the flesh that's to go over into the millennium years. You follow me? Okay. 
So God can stretch time, shorten time, or whatever, or stop time. Now, when the Jews were out of the land, the time stopped as far as Israel goes. And it started for the church. So we've got 2,000 years to spread the gospel, and the time stopped. Now, when the rapture comes and they sign that treaty, either just a little bit before the rapture or after the rapture, and somewhere right in here, there'll be the Gog and Magog war, but it'll be pretty close to that period of time right there. So when uh, they sign that peace treaty, the seven years begin. Now, where did this seven years come from? Anybody can tell me? I know Mike can. The seven years is the last seven years of the 70th year. It's the 70th year, okay? Let me read this for you. Where's it at? Right here. <clears throat> Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel 9, 24, and 27, and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So in other words, right there, it talks about in Daniel when Jesus would be cut off, when he would be crucified. That's right in the Bible. And if you go all the way back, and there again you trace it all the way back to the beginning of the, uh, it says here, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the co commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem starts right there. All the way to where, where the master is cut off for the sins of the people. It says, until the Messiah, the prince, shall be 70 weeks and three score and two weeks. So it gives that, that time area of 62 weeks and seven weeks, and you come to 483 weeks, and you have seven years left over. But what happens is, because of the disobedience of God's children, that stopped. In other words, this period right here, if they, if they had not, if they had obeyed, we'd just take that seven years right there and move it right to about right here. You see that? But because of their disobedience, God stretched this last seven years to make up for the transgression of the Jews now. I'm talking about the Jews. Time stopped for the Jews. The church came into being. We preached the gospel to the world for 2,000. We're out of here. And then the seven years a punishment will be upon the Jews. So the tribulation years is the punishment towards the Jews and the ungodly of the earth, and not for the people, not for the children of God. So, can we understand that? I know it's fuzzy. That's the best I can do. <laughs> I've been studying this for 50 years. <laughs> All right, now. What a time goes by. So when you look at this, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet is the end of the Gentile rule over the earth. And then the stone comes in and deals with the Gentile nations, which are no more, and then Israel will be the capital nation of the world. Christ will be there ruling the world as the king of the earth. David will be there as king of Israel. Very simple, not complicated. So, what we want to do is see, when we see all of this and study this out, our faith should be energized because everything that was prophesied years ago, all these prophecies have come true. And let me just cover a few. We've got about 15 more minutes. For your faith to be energized, 
to see that God has laid this all out. And he's showing us about it. Now, let me just give you a couple uh, prophecies and uh, show you that where they have been fulfilled. All right, in Genesis 3.15, that's the first prophecy about the Messiah. And it's the seed of the woman, the virgin birth. All right, has the seed of the woman came forth yet? Raise your hand if, if you know. All right. There we go up on the board. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thy shall bruise his heel. So Satan will bruise the Lord's heel, and Jesus will bruise his head. All right, that's that prophecy there. So we're seeing a, a Savior will come forth and deal with the serpent. So that was fulfilled in the Bible. We know that when Christ was crucified. So turn to Galatians 4, 4. Galatians 4, 4. So when you go into the Bible, you, you see the prophecy. Now we're at a point where we can see that, hey, that's already passed because it's all laid out in the Bible. Okay, look, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Now, when did that happen? That's the virgin birth. Do you, everybody see that? Okay, very important you see that. Now, when was that prophesied? Somebody tell me. Way back in Genesis 3.15. Everybody say, Genesis 3.15. That's the first prophecy of a Savior that was going to come. Now, and here's the fulfillment of But when the fullness of the time was come. Has that fullness come yet? Yes. God sent forth His Son. When? In Bethlehem, 2,000 years ago, see? And it was and made of a woman. In other words, he came from a woman. Now, here's the thing about it. The seed of the woman. Now, wait a minute. A woman doesn't have a seed. A woman has an egg. So who has the seed? Y'all know that. I know you know that. The man has the seed. All right. And so... Mary provided the egg and God provided the seed. Remember, the Holy Ghost came upon Mary and she conceived. You see all that? Okay, very good. All right, what you got? I didn't hear what he say. Yeah, but when the fullness of the time was come, yeah. Huh? Yeah, made under the law. Yeah, yeah, he, was, he, he fulfilled the law. Yeah, under the law. See, here's what you got to see. He wants to know. Hmm? What did he say? What he's asking is the Eve. He's it has to do with Eve. He wants to know why it's made under the law. What does that mean? Under the law of grace? Well, law of Adam and Eve? Jesus Christ was born during the time when the law was still in operation. Okay, he, 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 everything he did, he fulfilled the law. We understand that? Those three and a half years that he walked, he, everything he did, he fulfilled the law. Three things he had to fulfill. He had to fill the, the prophecy of, of the prophets, the law, and the Psalms. It had to be fulfilled. See, that tells us that he's on the ball. Because <laughs> ain't nobody can fulfill the law. <laughs> but he did for us. Okay. Now. So you got that. Uh, well, so, but when the fullness of the time was come. See that's an important uh, word there. Because even in our own lives. In some of your lives. You need to see in the fullness of time. <laughs> in the fullness of time. Willie. Fullness of time. So you might as well enjoy the ride until the fullness of time. We all got something, but it's, it'll come in the fullness of time. Okay, was well, come. God said that. That's when He sent His Son. When the fullness of time came, the law. then His okay. Son came into when the Jesus world. Jesus was born, uh, woman. born. What was the first thing when they went to Jerusalem? 
What did they do? The little baby Jesus. They circumcised him according to the law. Eight days later, remember? Yeah, see, he fulfilled, he fulfilled everything of the law, okay? Now, we have died to the law. I'm not going into that, but we've died to the law. Romans 7 will tell us that. All right, here we go. All right, so we see that, that we can say that prophecy was prophesied way back there in, in, in uh, Genesis, and we could read it and see that it has happened. And now 2,000 years later, we're here, and we can look back when it was prophesied, when it was fulfilled. You see that? That are strength in your faith. I mean, you go all through the scriptures and you'll see that. Now, let's go to the next one. All right. It says, he will bruise Satan's head. Turn to, um, that's in also in, th- in Genesis 3.15. Hebrews uh, 2.14. Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. And and who are these children? Raise your hand if you're one of them. (laughs) That's us. Partakers of flesh and blood. And we are. Our daddy and mama's flesh and blood. We're partakers of that. He also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him. Who is him? Satan. He bruised his head. You hear that? Okay. He's bruised badly, man, I'm telling you. That had the power of death, that is the devil. And that's happened. See, the power that Satan has over us is deception. That's why you've got to watch out for your thoughts. All your thoughts. And some of you, I guarantee you right now, your mind has been somewhere in yonder way. <laughs> you might t- raise your hand if I'm telling the truth. Let me see. Look at it. I see. I, I, you're honest. I, know, I sit there where you've sat. <laughs> Listen, that piece of pie will be in the refrigerator when you get home. Stop worrying about it. <laughs> All right, church, now I'll bring you back into focus. <laughs> All right, now, let's move on to another one. All right, here's the, the bodily ascension to heaven, illustrated. Turn to Genesis 5.24. Genesis 5.24. The bodily ascension to heaven, illustrated. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Does God take some people? <laughs> How many would like to be taken right now? Some of you ain't raised your head. Y'all. You, oh, you want to hang around and suffer a little bit more. That's all right. You can have my part of it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're thinking about that chicken, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> After I eat that chicken, I'll be ready to go, Lord. <laughs> Look, Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Now there's the rapture right there. There's the rapture right there. One person there. But the rapture will be many folks. What you got? Uh, Pastor, do you believe that you'll be one of the end time prophets that come back and preach? What do you say? Will he be one of the, the uh, end time prophets that will come back? Two witnesses. Possibility, possibility. Uh, I know when I mentioned, uh, I think last week I mentioned uh, uh, Peter, John, and James up on the mountain, and, and Jesus and Moses, but I left out one prophet. <laughs> Not Isaiah, but uh, uh, help me. Elijah. 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 But it might be Enoch. You know, some things we don't know for sure. Doesn't matter. I mean, if we know, you know. If we don't, we don't. So we don't worry about that. So there we have that. And turn to Mark 16, 19. <laughs> that was a body ascension. Remember, a body. A body. He went up. Well, was he changed in the atmosphere? I don't know. It doesn't say that. But I know one thing. God can handle it all. Okay. Next. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> Mark 16, 19. Mark 16, 19. 
By the way, I have hundreds of these, so I'm just going to give you a little as we move along. So don't worry, I'm going to let you go in five minutes, okay? So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set at the right hand of God. So here is another body resurrection, but we know that he was in his resurrected body. And when we go up, we will be in our resurrected body at the rapture. Okay. Very clear, not complicated. Up, up. Up we go into the wild blue yonder. Up, da, da. Oh, I can see it now. That's just wonderful. Just think, when Jesus comes back, now listen to it, the Son of Man, you shall see the Son of Man in the air. A man, a man in the air. Can you imagine back in those days when they read that? They'd never seen, they, they see birds in the air. I mean, we see airplanes in the air. I mean, it's like nothing. But to see a man in the air coming with all these angels and these saints, what a picture that's going to be. Glory to God. I'm just stirring your imagination a little bit. This thing's exciting. <coughs> I know some of you want to get married and all that before the rapture comes. But in the fullness of time, somebody said, when is the Lord going to come? In the fullness of time, he will come. I don't care if you're eating chicken or pork and beans. When he comes, up and away we go. All right, church. Two more minutes. All right, here we go. Turn, turn to put Genesis 9.26. Now, here's the descendants, Shem. How many ever heard of Shem? All right. Genesis 9, 26. There we go. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So Shem is in the, in the lineage of, all the way through King David, all the way to uh, Joseph and Mary. Okay? Now, when you read the Bible, here's what you got to remember when you read the Bible. Satan has tried to kill, and you see all of the, the things that happened to the Israelites. It's Satan trying to kill the seed. Cut it off. You understand that? When you read the Scriptures, you'll see the spiritual application while a lot of things were happening to the people of God, was Satan was after that seed, okay? And if he could stop the seed, why, was he, why did he want to stop the seed? Huh? Somebody tell me. Because the seed was going to bruise his head. You understand? He says, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. If I get the seed, no problem. I'll be cheese on the stick. <laughs> See, everybody tries to copy Satan. They want to be cheese on the stick. <laughs> you can, but another kingdom will come along and knock you off the stick. Then you'll be on the stick. Then you'll be knocked off the stick. See, if you read history, go through the Bible, that's what you say. Because that's man's way of doing it. Right now, I think China's president is in, in, in trouble. China's president's in trouble. I think he's going to be, you know, he's on the stick. He's president. He's on the bottom, and they got somebody else up there now. <laughs> Those communism, that's the way they work, you know. You big cheese for a while, yeah. And then a, another piece of cheese that's bigger than you comes along and knocks you off. <laughs> Aren't you glad you ain't got to worry about all that stuff? But you see a lot of that sometimes in the church. <laughs> All right. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. The Canaanites. Remember the Canaanites? Well, they'll be the servants of Shem, of God's people. All right, go to the next verse, which is in the New Luke Testament. Luke 36, and we'll leave, let this be the last one. Luke uh, 3.36. 
Luke 3.36. Luke 3.36. Which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Hallelujah, which was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech. So that's the lineage all the way down to the line. <laughs> Knock out one of those boys and you've done and the, seal, the seed is out of here. But God protected that seed. Now you'll see that in your life and in your kid's life. How many times in here has the devil tried to take you out? Of, out? Raise your hand. And you know at some point. Even your kids. There's no doubt in my mind that little girl belongs to God. But she didn't get hurt. Remember that. God protected her. So when we go through all the scriptures in the, in the Bible. And I got. I got just a few here. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, look at her. <laughs> all prophecy and all have come forth. You know, the testimony to that law is the uh, last time in India. What, what do you say? What do you say? And, uh, I never put my phone in my right hand pocket because that one I have to kick start to bite. It always jams up my leg. And uh, we're running through the jungle. For some reason, I put that phone in my right pocket. And this tree branch was over. Oh, you're, 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 so you're sharing about one time the devil tried to take you out. See, yeah, yeah. It's, it's simple. It's not complicated. Jesus said it this way. Satan has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Listen to what I just said. Satan has come. Satan has come. Satan has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Very simple. Not complicated. And so it behooves us to walk circumspectly under protection of God. And that lessens the chances of, of uh, us allowing Satan to take us out. And I can give you many illustrations of my own life, even back when I was a, a, a baby. I was in this automobile accident. Now you all know what happened to me. <laughs> now you know, partner. <laughs> well, you know. I was the only one in the car who wasn't hurt. The car ended up on a tree like this. The front of the car was like this, down, and everybody had, was in the front on the floor, all tangled up with one another. And, and Mama said, all I could say is, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, many times, the devil tried to take me out, tried to destroy this minister. I can give you many illustrations of that. But see, don't worry about anything. Walk in God, walk in the Spirit. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Very simple, not complicated. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Amen. All right, I hope you brought a little remembrance or helped you a little bit tonight, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you now that we could, the main thing is that we want to see that you planned it all out and we can read the Bible and see that it's true. Everything you said that would come forth, it has come forth. So therefore, everything you say that will come forth in the near future will come forth. And we want to thank you that we have the word of the Lord and we believe the word. In Jesus' name, amen.